This is how my YouTube talking head footage looks straight out of camera. And after a few steps, this is what my color graded footage looks like. And in this video, I'm going to break down each step to show you how I get this look. This is the footage straight out of camera and I shoot in a custom Cine 4 profile. So it's not a super flat log profile, but it is also kind of flat to give me some room to grade. So the first thing I do is I add a color wheels correction and I create a very subtle S curve to create a little more contrast in the shot. It's very subtle because I have a lot of dark areas here and I already have some strong highlights. So I don't want to go overboard and push this S curve too much. Being subtle here is key. Next, I'll add a color wheels adjustment. And on this one, I'm going to boost the global saturation just to get a little bit more color into the scene. And specifically in these highlights, I want more of my skin tone to come through. So I'm going to boost the highlights just a little bit, maybe a little bit more. And I'm going to also add some orange into the skin tones there, maybe a little yellow. And some of the other stuff feels a little bit too saturated. So I'm going to bring the mid-tone saturation down a tad just to balance out the saturation. It's looking a little bit on the orange side, so I'm going to dial this temperature to the left just to make it a little bit cooler. So let's have a look at what it looked like before adding this color wheel adjustment and then afterwards. I think that looks pretty good and I'm grading by eye here. If I wanted to get really technical and zoom into the skin tones and get everything perfect, I could do that and I have videos about that, but that's beyond the scope of this tutorial. The next step is one you might not necessarily think of doing and that's to add another color wheels adjustment and I'm going to add a mask using this mask icon over here and specifically a shape mask. The goal of adding a shape mask here is that I want to grade the inside of the mask separately to the outside. So I'm just going to adjust this mask around me and I'm going to create quite a large feather around this mask. Something like that should do. Now down here in the mask settings, you can choose what these color wheels affect, whether it's the inside or the outside of the mask. I'll select the outside and what I'm going to do is just darken it. I'm gonna overdo it so you can see what it does. Essentially, it creates a nice little vignette but I'm not going to go so strong. I'm going to just bring it down a little bit and I might just desaturate the shadows a little bit. Then I'm going to hop over to the inside of the mask and over here, I'm going to boost the brightness just a little bit, maybe increase the saturation a little bit on the highlights and on the global slider. It's a subtle adjustment, but that little adjustment is gonna help focus the viewer's attention on me and not on anything that might be distracting on the edges of the frame. I'm happy with that, so I'll hit done. And now the last step is I'm going to add a custom LUT because this looks fine as is, but I just want to have a little bit of a creative look. So I'll head over to my effects panel and I'll add a custom LUT effect by double clicking it. The reason I do this at the end is because I want any exposure adjustments that I make to be below the custom LUT layer. You could of course add your LUT and then apply these layers and move them below, but I like doing it at the end. So I'll grab my fire and ice LUT from my fire and ice LUT pack which is available on my website if you're interested. And anyone who signs up for my color grading course gets this LUT pack for free. Often the look that a LUT has is too strong when it's at 100%. So I like to set this one to 50% in this particular grading scenario. And that looks pretty good. This is usually the point where I'll go in and tweak anything if I feel it's necessary. So for example, I'll come into the color curves here. I'll just bring down some of the shadows a little bit. And then on the color wheel section, I feel like I need just a little bit more saturation just gonna bump that up a little bit. And we still have a slight orange tint. I can probably cool that down a little bit further. And now the most important part of this whole process so that I don't have to do this every single time I shoot in this room, I can hit the save effects preset button, call it default grade or whatever I want. And I just save that in whatever category I want. In this case, it's Brad West and I save all of those effects. Now I'll quickly hit Command Shift X to remove all these attributes, just the video ones. And let's pretend this is a new video I'm working on. I can head over to my effects, search for default grade or navigate to my category where I have it saved and just double click to add those effects to the clip. If you enjoyed these tips and you want to learn more about color grading, I highly recommend checking out my color grading course, which I'll link to down below. By the way, if you want to see my lighting setup and how that contributes to this look, then you'll want to watch my tiny studio tour video next.